Hey, what is up everyone? Today I'm taking a look at the Figurized Standard Amplified Machine Drum On. Once again, this is another video that would not be possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you want some Digimon model kits of your own, once again, there's a link down there in the description. And I have a question for you. So these have been building up ever so slightly lately. So let me know if I am to build and review one of these next. Which one would you like to see? So that is the... Figure I standard Metal Garurumon, Figure I standard War Greymon, different from the amplified ones we would have seen before, or the Omegamon X antibody, and that is amplified. So first off, taking a quick look at the box, and I will mention I built this quite a while ago, so I don't have any build footage of it, but I will talk about the build in a second. First off, the box art looks incredible. This is big around the size of a Master Grade. On the first side of the box then, we've got an image of what it will look like finished. There is the front and the back. And I have to admit, this is a really cool design. It works so well for a model kit. There's the blurb about Machine Drummond, just in case you don't know. You can pause, read it now. Apparently it has a large body and a pull-out gimmick. <laughs> uh, yeah, keep your dirty jokes to yourself. We've got an opening hatch in the chest for the Giga Destroyer. And some of the serpentine articulation on this kit is done with a pair of wires. Now, we'll mention this is impressive and I like it a lot. Let's check it out. So as usual, starting this off by jumping into the overview of absolutely everything that comes inside of this box once you put Machine Drum on together. And as you can see, it doesn't come with anything, and that is because it does not need anything. This has so many onboard weapons, it is crazy. This is one big, massive, killing machine covered in armaments. And I have to say, I didn't know what to expect from this kit, but I am super, super impressed. I love it. Let's jump in to the aesthetics. So just to show how big this is, I'm going to jump right into the size comparison. There is a high-grade Gundam, and there is high-grade Strike Gundam, and you can see this thing is pretty big. As for a master-grade comparison, there it is beside the Oryx 782, and there is a master-grade Zaku. There it is beside a perfect-grade Oryx 782 Gundam, and finally there it is side-by-side -side with the amplified versions of War Greymon and Metal Garurumon. So yeah, it's pretty damn big. So jumping straight on into that full 360 spin of this absolute behemoth of a kit, and I have to say I am impressed on so many levels with this. First off, it is huge, and secondly, the amount of detail on this is stupendous. I mean, there's a kind of weird effect where it looks panel lined, it is not. It's just that metallic injection plastic, which is in silver, which usually I don't like on its own. It's kind of casting its own almost cell shaded looking vibe. I, I don't even know what to say. It makes... The light parts light and the dark parts dark, giving nice lines through all of the recessed bits, which kind of causes some shadowing. That is cool. On top of that, we've also got some incredible detail, including some nice colors on the wiring on Machine Dramon right here. Those ridiculously cool skull kneecaps. And we do have a lot of clear red all over this kit, which has stickers underneath, almost Gundam 00 style. Instead of being green, they're red, but it's the same effect and they catch the light so beautifully. Honestly, this thing looks so, so good. It looks like an absolute savage beast of a mech. And that's what it is. It is a mech savage beast. It's a mecha dragon and it looks kick-ass. The build of this kit means it is layered up in an absolutely fantastic sort of way. So we've got some clear parts inside the eyes, on the side of the face, and we've got all the detail inside of that absolutely killer looking jaw. That does mean this jaw here can open and close, which gives it an even more bestial appeal. The layering on this is so well simply, but nicely done. The knees on Machine Dramon right here are quite literally skulls, and when you bend the knees, these open and close fully. How cool is that? Definitely digging that right there. The neck here is very well designed, so these are rubberized, but you wouldn't really tell just from looking at them. And inside the neck, we do have two wires, which allows this to actually move around. Pretty cool. As this is quite a busy design, it is a little hard at times to kind of appreciate it. So I'm just going to yank up the leg here just to kind of show the kind of cool way the light works on the metallic injection plastic. Like I've mentioned so many times before, usually I don't like metallic injection plastic, but that's in a vacuum. In this situation, it's all together, so it works in a cool kind of, like I mentioned, high shine versus low shadow kind of way, which lines it up without, you know, panel lining it. Again, this is such a cool kit. So seeing as Machine Dramon right here does not have any accessories in the box, I guess we have to kind of skip the usual accessories part. But what I'm going to do instead is go through all of the killer onboard weapons. 
So first up in here, we've got the two arm mounted weapons, which are the Mega Hand and the Booster Claw. What it says in the instructions about the Mega Hand is that it is the right arm and that can be opened and closed. So what does that actually mean with the actual model right here? So these can open up just like so. And on jumping over to the Digimon Wiki, it says that this can actually be used for the Dragon Fire attack. So this spins like a drill. So you can actually spin the model kit here, but spins a little bit awkwardly. As in, this kit is not designed really for to spin. On to the next one. So jumping back to the instructions and what it says is the left arm is equipped with a booster claw, a large claw that can be shot out. However, when I do jump over to the Digimon Wiki, it does say that it has an attack called Infinity Hand where it launches a blast of energy from its hand. I'm going to assume that's the other hand we just looked at, not this one. If you know the ins and outs of these attacks and what these weapons do, drop it in the comments and I will pin it. So what does that actually mean when we get to the model kit? Not really a whole lot. This arm is pretty much the same as the other arm, but it has a little less going on. So the same articulation here, bend and spin, but the claws can move individually about that amount. So that much back and then that much forward, and you can kind of spread them all out at different angles, just like so. So the next thing then in the manual, it says about those cannons up on the back, that is the Mugen Cannon or the Infinity Cannon. A deadly cannon attack that can be fired successively due to the infinite amount of energy generated by the Digicore inside its body. The barrels in the body are made of silver parts that resemble full metal. And according to the uh, wiki, it says that is the Giga Cannon, Super Dreadnought class energy waves from its two cannons. And when it comes to the actual model kit here, these are some huge cannons up on its back. There is a high grade Gundam for scale and these can pivot down and up and out and in on a ball joint. They can also flip around to the back if you want them a little bit out of the way. One thing that is not mentioned in the manual but is mentioned on the side of the box is the opening hatch in its chest to reveal the warheads within. And back to the Digimon wiki again, this is the Giga Destroyer fires organic missiles from the hatch on part of its chest. And as to what this means in the model kit, it does mean we've got a cool opening gimmick right here in the chest of Machine Dramon. Just opens up like that and like that to unleash the attack inside. So jumping into the last part of the review, which is the articulation and the build. So the build on this is rock solid for the most part, but this is a whole lot of plastic. So that does mean there will be times where it will have a little bit of issues holding itself up. But most of the time, this thing is solid for how huge it is. See, it can do that. But for the most part, it's very solid. But if you feel it isn't, we do have this little bit here you can open up and use with an action base. And it just pops onto one just like that and makes it look comically, comically small. As usual, starting from the head down on this beast and we have that opening and closing mouth. So that is a very nice feature. The neck right here does have that set of wires either side. Now this is a bit of a mixed bag of a kind of joint because you can move it all up like that. We got a popped out bit at the back and it may or may not hold. It kind of half does what it wants to, but most of the time you're going to get the vast majority of that range of movement. We also have rotation at the next segment right there, and down here it can rotate as well, which kind of changes the angle for when you want Machine Dramon right here, looking side to side. At the shoulders now, this is where we finally have that pull out gimmick, moves out like so. So the cannons up here in the back do get in the way of this a little bit, so I'm going to detach them just for now. They pop off like so. And now the shoulder here on Machine Dramon allows the arm to move up and down like this. Back and forth ever so slightly like this. We've got the full 360 spin inside of that. It's a kind of ratchet style joint, so it does bop, 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 bop like that. Inside the shoulder, we do have a little bit of extra right there. So we've got that and that for that range of motion. This feels a little weak, but it does hold. We've got full spin at the upper arm. As for the elbow bend, make sure it's pointing the right way because then you get a whole lot out of it. That is the bend and that is the same on both sides. Nice bend. Next up here at the ab crunch section, we've got another kind of pull out joint. So if you lift this up and out, you get a lot more out of this. So Machine Dramon can crunch all the way down like this and move all the way up and to the back like this. So that does unlock a whole lot of movement there. And then we've got rotation all the way around here. 
Inside there, we also have a crunch side to side, giving you quite a bit. At the hip here, it's just a spinning peg, but that can spin all the way around. The legs can kick out to there, so no splits, but not too bad at all. We've got the full spin at the upper leg, another ratchety joint. We've seen it already, but there is that bend at the knee with opening skull mouth, really cool. And now getting that foot on the ground to check out that functional movement. So without moving the foot off the ground, there it is all the way to the front. We have a bit of a toe bend, so that is great. There it is then out to the back, so a little bit limited there. And as for those toes, those can all move up individually. Pretty cool. As for the side to side pivot, it is there to there, which is pretty decent. I think we might have a spin there as well, yeah? A bit of a side to side swivel. We did take these cannons off, but we saw them earlier on. It's just a ball joint attachment right here that lets them do what a ball joint does. The tail here is just like the neck, so this has wires inside of it, so it can bend. It doesn't do exactly what you want it to, it sometimes resets a little bit, but it goes side to side like so, and there is a little bit of a rotation in there that the wires can do too. That is, that, that's pretty cool. Has, uh, that hip been on the wrong way through the whole review? That can actually be put on the wrong way. Most Bandai kits, you can't put things on the wrong way. But if you can, I most certainly will do it. So the articulation on the figure eyes standard amplified machine drum on is way beyond what I would ever expect from a big bulky kit like this. There was a time when Bandai made big crazy kits and kind of just didn't give them much in the lines of articulation. They were almost big statues. That is not the case here. This is one limber mecha giant badass. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and I have to say, this thing blew my mind when I built it, and it blows my mind still right now. This is unlike anything else I have ever built. I expected it to be big, hollow, statue-like, and not really having a whole lot of features going on, but that is not the case. Bandai pulled out all the stops for this and really gave it a decent premium treatment. This silver metallic gloss injection plastic actually looks quite good, maybe because the whole kit is pretty much made out of it. We've got some grey on there to counteract against it, red, blue, and the shiny red looks phenomenal against all of that. Sure, this kit doesn't come with any accessories, but that makes sense. It's not like Machine Dramon right here needs anything but the loadout that it comes with. It's got cannons on its back, two ridiculously awesome and very different arms, warheads in its chest, and a big munchin' chomping mouth. This thing doesn't need anything else. Well, maybe an action base. And what shook me up the most about this kit is the fact that it does have so much articulation built into it. Bandai did not cut any corners. It is rock solid, sure it does have a loose bit here and there, but that is based mainly on its weight more than anything else. It still holds up so, so good. What they pulled off with the wires in the tail and neck works really well, and the whole thing is just so fun in the hand. It's nice to pose, it's cool to pose, and it's got some decent shelf presence because it's massive. But yeah, what can I say? This kit pretty much does everything and does it all perfectly. If you've been thinking about grabbing this kit, I highly recommend that you do. It is so awesome. Anyways, I always thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I will see you next time. Once again, I cannot finish this video right here without thanking those who support me here on the channel as members and over on Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Caleb Engelhart, Van Fon, Global Frequency Studios, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kukluk, Mr. Winter, Forsetti, Joe, Orgy59061, and Gunpla UK Limited.